Good day. Welcome to Fresh Manna Ministries, hosted by Reverend Dr. Alan G. Jenkins, Jr. and yours truly, Benjamina Jenkins, and a host of pastors, evangelists, teachers, ministers, prayer warriors, and partners. Together we are on a mission to encourage, equip, and strengthen the body of Christ and to win lost souls for the kingdom of heaven. What she has to say, the message that she is bringing to us today, we thank you, Dr. Lee. Good morning, Amen. everyone. Good morning. We thank you, Evangelist, uh, for your opening and for reading that scripture for us. And so I want to talk with us this morning about the God factor, the God factor. We do things naturally, and in doing so, we often deny God's power. We say we believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, We say we believe in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. But when trouble comes, when financial difficulties rise, when our children are crippling their lives and we act like we have no power, we act like we are not connected to the power. We need to go back to relying on the supernatural power of God. Amen. It's time to realize that miracles and wonders are not just stories that were uh, told long ago. They are still needed today. We need to get back to God. Jesus said in Mark that when he went to his own hometown, he was not able to perform many miracle signs or wonders. He was only able to do a few to heal a few. In order for miracles, signs, and wonders to exist today as they did in former years, there needs to be an atmosphere of faith. An atmosphere of faith will allow an atmosphere of praise, and an atmosphere of praise will proceed from an atmosphere of prayer. Hebrews 11 and 6 says you got to have faith to believe that God is, and you have to have faith before you come to him. And then you, when you believe that he is and you come to him, you also have to believe that he is a rewarder of those who seek him diligently. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. So, so beloved, it's time for us to get back to God. There, there were impossible situations in the Bible, and I know sometimes we face situations that seem impossible. But when we believe in God, when we believe in Jesus Christ, his son, and have faith in the Holy Spirit, nothing shall be impossible for me and you. In my power, yes, things are impossible. In your power, yes, things may be impossible. Even when we work together, we will run into impossible situations. But when you and I incorporate the God factor, nothing is impossible. So let us let us look at the word of God, what the word of God has to say to us about this God factor. Well, in Mark 10 and 27, God says, he says with God, all things are possible. Luke 18 and 27 says, what is impossible for mere men is possible for God. It says in Mark 9, 23, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible. Mark 14 and 36, he says, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Matthew 17 and 20, for truly I tell you, if you have faith, the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will get up and nothing
nothing will be impossible for you. Luke 1 and 37 says, for nothing will be impossible for God. Matthew 19 and 26 repeats it. For mortals, it is impossible. For God, all things are possible. So God said to Sarah, and when she laughed because she figured her body is dead as far as bringing forth children, tell I have a child in my old age. And God said to her, is anything too hard for the Lord? Is there to Anything too hard for God? In Romans 4 and 17, Abraham, it said, didn't consider his own body. In other words, he deleted himself and put God in the equation. He, 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 he relied on the, the God factor. We've got to factor God in in everything we do. Exodus 14 and 21, Moses was at the Red Sea. Pharaoh was on his heels, and he cries out to God. God said, stretch out the rod, Moses. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivered us uh, out of them all. The three Hebrew boys, they, they were in the fiery furnace, but the fire wouldn't burn them, not because it wasn't hot, but because of what they said. Your words carry power. Your words carry the power of the word of God. Death and life, may I remind us, is in the power of the tongue. We speak what we believe. When, when we're in a tight spot, uh, some of us speak what, what we believe. You rise or fall on what you believe. You, you live or die by what we believe. It's not always money that's needed. We need faith. Faith moves mountains. Faith puts out the fire. Numbers 11 and 31, the children of Israel are in the wilderness, and God was providing for them bread, sweet bread called manna. They wanted meat. Uh, that's how we are. Uh, uh, we, we're seldom satisfied, and God was feeding them manna from heaven sweet, savory bread. Uh, God gave them meat until it ran out of their noses. He, God gave them so much meat until it was piled up three feet high for as far as they could walk in a day. You see, beloved, we've got to believe God can do just what he said. Don't tell me God can't pay our bills. You've got to get Babylon out of you and God back into us. Luke 1 and 28 says, angels came to a young girl named Mary. You know the story. And favor her. Favor is that which God grants you out of God's goodwill. Uh, we can't earn it, and God knows we don't deserve it. And favor is not fair. In the kingdom of God, you get exactly what you expect. You've got to expect favor from God in this last hour. You, if we're watching the signs of the time, we will recognize that the time is winding up. We've got to expect doors to open. We've got to expect policies to be changed. You've got to expect preferential, preferential treatment like Esther. You've got to expect battles to be fought for you. You've got to expect somebody to recognize you and give you a prominent position for no reason at all. That's what we call favor. We've got to expect to be honored in the midst of your enemies. God said, I will prepare a table before you in the midst of your enemies. So you've got to expect restoration of everything that's been stolen from you. You, you are entitled to define favor as a covenant child of God, divine favor. It's a covenant right. Angel told Mary, you're going to have a child. Mary said, how can this be when I know no man? And the angel replies to her, uh, it may be impossible for man, but there's nothing impossible with God. With God, it is possible. 
Luke 1, 34, the angel of the Lord said, the Holy Ghost shall empower, overshadow you and empower you. For with God, nothing, y'all don't hear me, nothing shall be impossible. Well, let, let, let me wrap up this short talk by telling you, uh, sharing with you this example from uh, Acts 27. Paul is in Caesarea. He's arrested and a big storm comes up while he's being transported by ship to Rome. They were being pounded by the storm so violently that they began to throw their cargo overboard. And on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard. Uh, many days later, with the wind still tossing the ship, they, they lost all hope of being saved. All hope of being saved was lost. They had no hope. Maybe somebody listening to me today, maybe you know what it's like to be on the corner of no hope and downtrodden. No hope that you're going to make it. No more hope that you're going to get well. No hope that things will turn around in your favor. No more hope that your ship is going to come in and you haven't heard from God. You prayed and you cried and you cried and you prayed and, and seemed like God is just silent. But the Bible says when Abraham no, had no hope, that's when he believed in, in God. That's when he trusted God the most. This Bible that we read, this Bible that we study, this Bible is filled with examples designed to give us hope when all around us seem hopeless. So whatever is going on in your life today, I want you to know you will overcome. Whatever it is, God can turn it around. The question for you and me today is, do we believe God? Do we believe in God? Uh, do you believe in the power of God? Can God? Huh? Can God? I, I, I know what the doctor says, but can God? When we face difficult situations, it may find ourselves in front of a judge. And I know what the judge may say, but can God? All things are possible. It only takes one word from God. One word from God makes the difference. Is there anything too hard for God? One word from God, one word from him who hung, bled, and died. One word from him who, who the grave couldn't hold. Just one word can turn it all around. I don't care what the situation is. I don't care how hard things may seem. I don't care if your back is against the wall and you feel like the rock is upon you. There is nothing too hard for God. It's the God factor. Don't count God out. Factor God in. Uh, 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 this last word, don't give up on God. Because God will never give up on you and me. Let us remember Whatever comes, whatever goes, we have the God factor. Oh, God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God. We praise you. We magnify you because your word continues to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Help us, oh, God, that no matter what we go through, no matter who comes, no matter what goes, that we will always remember to factor you in. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 And amen, somebody. Thank you for listening. Join us next time. And remember to subscribe. Fresh Manna Ministries. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Number six verse 24 to 26. God bless you. Have a great day.